and afternoon. We begin our celebration of the Holy Eucharist in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the unity of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we call to mind our need for God's mercy. You came to call sinners, Lord have mercy. You came to heal the contrite, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas. And since without you mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands we may please you by our resolve and by our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. Naboth, the Jezreelite, had a vineyard in Jezreel next to the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. Ahab said to Naboth, Give me your vineyard to be my vegetable garden, since it is close by next to my house. I will give you a better vineyard in exchange, or if you prefer, I will give you its value in money. Naboth answered him, The Lord forbid that I should give you my ancestral heritage. Ahab went home disturbed and angry at the answer Naboth the Jezreelite had made to him. I will not give you my ancestral heritage. Lying down on his bed, he turned away from food and would not eat. His wife Jezebel came to him and said to him, Why are you so angry that you will not eat? He answered her, Because I spoke to Naboth the Jezreelite and said to him, Sell me your vineyard, or if you prefer, I will give you a vineyard in exchange but he refused to let me have his vineyard. His wife, said, his wife Jezebel said to him, a fine ruler over Israel you are indeed. Get up, eat and be cheerful. I will obtain the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite, for you. So she wrote letters to Ahab's in Ahab's name and having sealed them with his seal, sent them to the elders and to the nobles who lived in the same city with Naboth. That is what, this is what she wrote in the letters. Proclaim a fast and set Naboth at the head of the people. Next, get two scoundrels to face him and accuse him of having cursed God and king. Then take him out and stone him to death. His fellow citizens, the elders and nobles who dwelt in his city, did as Jezebel had ordered them in writing through the letters she had sent them. They proclaimed a fast and placed Naboth at the head of the people. Two scoundrels came in and accused him and said, Naboth has cursed God and king, and led them out of the city, and they stoned him to death. Then they sent the information to Jezebel that Naboth had been stoned to death. When Jezebel learned that Naboth had been stoned to death, she said to Ahab, Go on, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite, that he refused to sell you because Naboth is not alive, but dead. On hearing that Naboth was dead, Ahab started off on his way down to the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite, to take possession of it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm. Lord, listen to my groaning. Lord, listen to my groaning. At dawn I bring my plea expectantly before you. For you, O God, delight not in wickedness. No evil man remains with you. The arrogant may not stand in your sight. Lord, listen to my groaning. You hate all evildoers. You destroy all who speak falsehood. The bloodthirsty and the deceitful, the Lord abhors. Lord, listen to my groaning.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, offer no resistance to, to one who is evil. When someone strikes you on the right cheek, turn the other one to him as well. If anyone wants to go to law with you over your tunic, hand him your cloak as well. Should anyone press you into service for one mile, go with him for two miles. Give to the one who asks of you, and do not turn your back on one who wants to borrow. The Gospel of the Lord. As we continue in the Gospel of Matthew again, we're seeing that Jesus calls upon us to be countercultural. The, the expression he uses from the Old Testament, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, it was called the law of tallying. And that word becomes the English word retaliate. And the idea of that law was not a punishment, but a limitation of punishment. If someone hurt you in some way, you were supposed to be able to hurt him in the same way, not in a greater way. So someone steals from your house, you don't go and kill him. It was rather a limitation more than an exacting of a punishment. It was to keep people from exacting a revenge that was far beyond the evil that was committed. But Jesus goes in a completely other direction. He says, bear with evil patiently. Kill them with kindness is really the point that he's trying to make. And this makes the world a better place. We live in a, a, an era of litigiousness. Look at every other advertisement on TV. It's some lawyer who's going to sue someone and get you money because you were hurt in some way. We can get you millions of dollars. And so people wonder why insurance costs so much. But that's it. People wanting with their greed to get something more than what they might deserve. We continue in the Book of Kings. And once again, we see the wicked Queen Jezebel and her husband, is a wimp compared to her. He just gives in to what she says, not saying that it is wrong. A fine ruler of Israel you are indeed. Well, what kind of ruler kills someone unjustly just to take their property? But that's the kind of woman she was, and Ahab went right along with that. And remember, this is the same Jezebel who chased down all of the prophets of Israel except one, which of course was Elijah. And he, Elijah was the only one left, 450 prophets of the Baal, and they were all killed because God brought down fire from heaven to consume the sacrifice of Elijah, but did nothing for the false prophets of the Baal. In the end, we will see tomorrow as we continue what happens here. But the point is that the Jewish nation so often went off into idolatry, so often went off into making alliances with other nations and not depending upon God for their protection, and this had consequences again and again and again. And people like Elijah were always there to call people back to faithfulness to that covenant. You and I have a covenant as well, the covenant that is eternal, that is sealed in the blood of Jesus Christ. And it is that covenant that brings us eternal life. It is that covenant that teaches us not to retaliate, but to be kind and patient with others, knowing that that kindness will produce goodness in them and lead us all to the gift of a life that will never end. We come before the Lord in prayer asking God to hear our intentions. We pray for the leadership of our church throughout the world, our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop, Salvatore, and Matthew, for all men and women 
who serve the people of God all over the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those of our parish family who need our prayers, those who are in hospitals and nursing homes, those who have lost their loved ones in death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for religious vocations that our young people will hear and answer with generous hearts the call of the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our faithful departed, especially for the repose of the soul of Anthony Presnell, whom we remember in our Eucharist today, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our own intentions that we mention in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those affected by the coronavirus, those who seek a cure, those who have lost their loved ones, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you hear the prayers of your people who come before you this day. Answer us in the name of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hand. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. O God, who in the offerings presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament, grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The second Eucharistic prayer. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me.
The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our Bishop, and all the clergy and religion. Remember also our brothers and sisters, especially Anthony Fresnel, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Blessed Grimwald, Santa Maria, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us share with one another a sign of that peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. A prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Let us pray. As this reception of your Holy Communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Eucharist is ended. Let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord.